finally, anti-gravity. We've got the enchanted turquoise Ford Anglia, we've got Hagrid's flying motorbike, we've got those Quidditch matches whizzing around on broomsticks. Now surely muggle science can't do much to deliver this. And it is true, it's quite hard to think of ways to do it. You know, balloons, a bit slow, rocket-powered uh, broomsticks. Well, look, if you've got your long flowing robes, I mean, health and safety would shut down that broomstick in an instant. <laughs> so that's obviously completely impossible. So I'm going to come up with three slightly more exotic suggestions. Now, this is a picture of the universe. And it was taken by something called WMAP, which is a Wilkinson Microwave Anisotropy Probe. Uh, microwave kind of means heat. Uh, probe, where well, it's just looking at the universe. Uh, anisotropy, that kind of means splodginess. And what this is, is this is the echo of the Big Bang of creation. So the whole universe, space and time, was created 30.7 billion years ago. And if you look out the cosmos now, you'll find there are little patches that are a little bit warmer a little bit colder than other patches. It's the echo of the Big Bang. And you can tell a bit about how the universe evolved. And one of the amazing findings is that there's an anti-gravity force at work in the universe called dark energy. Now, maybe those clever wizards have found a way to harness dark energy to levitate broomsticks at Fort Anglias and so on. It's pretty speculative, that one, but that is based on a bit of real science. Here's another prototype broomstick. Now here I've got a spinning superconductor. Superconductor is a strange material that loses all resistance to electricity. And back in the 90s, a scientist called Pop Kletner did experiments where he span superconductors around and then he weighed things above them. And he thought they weighed a bit less. And it seemed to be an anti-gravity effect. Now the thing about science that distinguishes it, that makes it different from any other way we think, is that you never believe first experiment, and it's really important that other people try to reproduce it. Now, NASA has tried to reproduce the anti-gravity effect, because if it was true, you know, it would have a huge effect on space travel and so on, but unfortunately, no one's ever got Pod Kletnov's effect to work, so I'm not sure that one's going to work out either. So, here's another suggestion. This is something called a Levitron, and... It's quite a simple idea. You know when you get two magnets and you try and push them together and you get a re repellent force? Well, maybe you can use that effect to levitate things. Now, it turns out everyone thought that was impossible. There was a theory that was put forward in 1842 by Earnshaw that said it was a bit like trying to balance two ne one needle on top of the other. You know, they were just never going to stay up. And everyone believed that until a guy came up with this spinning top called a Levitron. And actually, it was really hard to explain how this thing works. Now, here's my Levitron. The reason I'm not doing it here is they're so fiddly, these things to set up. You've got to get these weights right. Uh, but here's a big magnet here, and this thing is also magnetic, but it's actually pretty satisfying. Here we go again. Now, this is typically what would happen. You'd see me doing this for about half an hour, and you'd all be going nuts, saying, why can't you get it to work? This is why I filmed it. It's much easier. But it's a really quite a cool effect. And I've got my glamorous assistant. That's my daughter, who is now a teenager and would be horrified to uh, see herself in this video. Um, but what's really interesting about this effect is, well, first of all, it took a really smart scientist, Sir Michael Berry, in Bristol to explain this effect. And it also turns out all the atoms in your body behave a bit like that Levitron. You're actually all diamagnetic. And if there's a big enough magnetic field, I can levitate all you guys as well. And the first person to really play with this was Andre Geim, who won the Nobel Prize for physics a couple of years ago. So he's a serious scientist, University of Manchester, famous for something called graphene. And Andre did it with strawberries. There's no magic in this. This is just using the Levitron effect from all the little atoms. Put it in a big enough magnetic field and you can levitate the strawberry. What I really like about Andre, here's Andre, this is a proper paper in a proper journal. It's written with hamster tissue. That's his pet hamster. 
because Tisha was actually levitated, put Tisha inside, very powerful magnetic field, levitated her. She lived to tell the tale, she's perfectly happy. And as far as I know, this is the first proper scientific paper written by a hamster. So there's a very important bit of research. Well, I love Andre Guy because he's done brilliant research, but he's got a huge sense of humour. In fact, he won an Ig Nobel Prize for his work, which is a sort of spoof of the, uh, of the Nobel Prizes. But of course, this doesn't feel very like, you know, hamsters don't really belong to the witch or wizarding world. But I think frogs are a bit more like it. And it turns out, lo and behold, that Andre, of course, put a frog. <coughs> and here you go. The frog was perfectly happy, probably a bit confused, but that's how you can levitate a frog with big magnetic fields. So there we are, one small step for a frog, and one giant leap for muggle kind. So there you have it. That's Harry Potter is where the wizarding world meets the magic of muggle science. Thank you very much.